anything like this in my career? No. The deputy police chief reacting tonight after the entire rapid response team steps down, leaving the city wondering what will happen in the next riot without a riot squad. Good evening. Thanks for joining us for Queen 6 News at 10. I'm Elizabeth Din. And I'm Dan Tilkin in for Jeff tonight. The move was a surprise, but it didn't come out of nowhere. We have a rundown of the events this week leading up to today's announcement. On Tuesday, Multnomah County District Attorney Mike Schmidt announced a grand jury indictment of a Portland police officer who is now facing an assault charge accused of hitting an independent journalist during a riot while serving on the rapid response team. Yesterday, it was revealed another member was being investigated this time by the State Department of Justice. And hours later, just last night, the entire rapid response team voted to resign. Our Jenny Young is live tonight after talking with the man heading up the city's independent investigation of the incident that led to the officer's indictment. And that is happening separate from the criminal case. So Jenny, how does that work? That's right, Dan, and it is important that we point that out. It is separate from the DA's investigation. This is one that is done by the city, and the man we spoke to leads that team. It's a team of 14 people who investigate incidents of alleged officer misconduct, and then uh, they report their findings and recommendations for action to the chief of police and the mayor. I mean, I can't say I'm surprised. I think that this has been kind of lurking as a possibility for quite a while. 50 Portland police officers told the chief of police they will no longer volunteer to work on the bureau's rapid response team. That's the group of officers who work protests, unlawful assemblies and riots. Obviously, it's a it's a difficult job. And I think when the the protests went on as long as they did, and I think that the way the police handled the protests, um, you know, it, it put the officers in a very difficult spot. Ross Caldwell leads the independent police review team under the helm of the city auditor. They're also investigating the incident that led to an officer's indictment earlier this week. The attorney for Terry Jacobs says this video captures the moments officer Corey Budworth pushed her to the ground and struck her with a baton. Budworth is charged with misdemeanor fourth degree assault. PPB's assistant police chief says what happened today with the rapid response team has been a long time coming. The Budworth indictment was just the last straw. As I understand the situation, just having listened to people and, and really heard what they're saying, I think that really this is the culmination of a very long process and it's not just an indictment that caused this to happen. I asked Caldwell what he thinks when he watches the video. I think it's terrible. I, I mean, I think it's very, it's very, very concerning and not, not kind of prejudging where we go with our investigation, but we saw that video and we automatically opened up a case. Regardless of how the Budworth ordeal ends, Caldwell hopes it spurs action that leads to Portland police officers wearing body cameras. So this would all be a lot easier if we had body cameras. For police officers, you know, if we've learned anything from the protests, it's that uh, for police accountability to really work effectively, we really need body cameras. Okay, so the DA released a video statement this week. Portland uh, Mayor Ted Wheeler, who also serves as a police commissioner, released a written statement. But our team has asked several times uh, to sit down with both of them and do an on-camera interview. Um, had, we have been declined, so we are going to keep trying. Dan Liz will send it back to you. Reporting live tonight in downtown Portland, Jenny Young, Coin 6 News. That office